Hey everybody, welcome back to Charming Data, where you learn all about analytic web apps in Python. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to work with chain callbacks. Chain callbacks are callbacks that depend on one another. In this case, you see how the second dropdown depends on the first dropdown and the state chosen within the first dropdown. So if I, the user of my app chooses California, only these um, counties within California are options that can be chosen um, in this dropdown. You cannot choose any other county. If I choose the county of um, Alabama, only those, let me X here, only those counties within Alabama can be chosen in this dropdown. So this is called a chain callback and is typically used in, in many different apps. Um, once all these um, counties are chosen then uh, by the user, then it displays a scatter plot where each bubble represents um, a county and the different values on the x-axis, y-axis, and the color bar. I'm also, I also created this code for you. I'm going to share this code with you for this app where you can see the difference. There is no figure that's populated before the app starts or when the app starts and there's no value that's populated here. There's nothing. The user has to choose the state first and then everything gets populated. So I'm not going to go over this in the tutorial. I'm going to teach you how to do this app. And I think that once you know how to do this app, this app would be um, a lot easier to understand, or at least the code that I'm going to show you is going to be easy to understand. If you do not understand, if you have questions about this app or this app that I'm not going to talk about, feel free to ask those questions in the comments below the um, YouTube video, or just join my patron Charming Data community. In about two or three days, I'm going to upload a video explaining this, this code um, as well. Okay, so to download, well, actually before the code, if you want to jump to certain sections of the video, just use the video layout under the video in the video description and just click on the link of where you want to jump to. Um, if you want the files, just go into my GitHub. This is below the video and download the file that you want. We're going to go over this chain fig preset uh, .py. This is a file that is going to create this app today um, in the tutorial. But I also created the Jupyter Lab Jupyter Dash code for you, which is a notebook um, file um, that it will allow you to run it on Jupyter Dash. So Jupyter Dash is a great um, platform to work with Dash. If you don't know how to, um, if you don't have Jupyter Dash um, or Jupyter Lab, just look into the video above my head. I give instructions on how to install and set up um, Jupyter Dash, and here's the code that you can find on my GitHub as well. Okay, um, the data we're going to go over is data is this CSV Excel sheet. There's many, many columns, but we're going to focus on these first five columns, the state, the county, and these, these variables. These variables, as you can see here in the, in the app that we created, or we're going to create, are the x-axis, the percentage of uh, population with no health insurance in every county. The percentage of population with poor health and then the color is the percentage of population that graduate from high school there tends to be a correlation between no health insurance or poor health um, and sometimes between graduate high school and poor health so you can see here the darker colors are lower percentage rates of graduation from high school and they tend to be in the poor with counties with poor um, higher percentage of poor health so interesting information information that can be used for prob probably um, setting public policy um, this data comes from the u.s congress joint economic committee from 2018 i think make sure to download this data either from the github or from uh, google drive um, and put it in the same folder where you have the python file so you can run it on your python ide and follow along this tutorial it will be a lot a lot easier okay so let's get started let's create this beautiful app with a chain callback and the scatter, scatter plot okay so um the first thing you want to do is obviously import these libraries if you're new to dash uh you don't know what this is just go to the terminal and just do let me make this bigger so you can see pip you only need to install two things pip install dash and then after you do that pip install 
um, pandas. Oh, you have to install one last thing that usually you don't install for most of my tutorials. Pip install stats model. Okay, make sure you install this here because it will not work without this stats model. Okay, so you installed everything, import these libraries. You don't have to import stats model, you just have to install it. Import these libraries. Uh, we're gonna use this CSS um, sheet um, for lining up things on, on the app. Start the app, read the CSV sheet that's in the same folder as this Python file, read it into the uh, Panda as data frame. And then let's go into the layout. Uh, remember, we're using the chain fig preset Python file, not the other file. We're using this file. Inside the layout, which is how the page is going to look like, uh, we're going to create, obviously, um, the label. Let's make this smaller so you can see, actually. We're going to create the label first, which is the state, right? Oh, where is it? Right here. State. And then we're going to create the first drop down right here, right, which has uh, the options um, that you can choose from from all the states from from the, the state column, all the states, right, and then the first first value that's populated into the um, app as soon as we load it is Alaska. So that's why you see Alaska here, and you can see all the different options and clearable false. So there's no X button here. Here you have an X button, but here you do not have an X button. Okay, so that's the first drop down. It's all ready and it's um, set to go. Then we have the counties label. Obviously, right here is counties. And then we have the second drop down. Now, the second drop down is a bit different. We have the ID we're going to use down here below for the callback, but we do not have uh, the options. The options is an empty list because that's going to be based on the state that the user chooses. So this, the options are going to be populated from the callback, the chain callback. And the multi-true just means that I'm going to allow the user to choose multiple uh, counties here, multiple values, not one, but multiple. And then graph is going to be, this is the ID for the callback, and we're going to populate the graph uh, with the figure of the graph, which is now an empty dictionary. We're going to put display the graph um, from the callback. All right. So this is our app layout. Let's see what happens with our app layout when there is no callback there. Let's hashtag everything out and this is going to reload and once it reloads you will see we don't have a graph and we don't have any options here everything is good this is just a regular layout um, that we have here right we do not have all these in there so in our first callback we need to create the options we need options to be here instead of no results let's create some options so this is exactly this right here okay so how do we do this the first callback what we're doing is we're, we're going to take the value, this is an input, we're going to take the value of the state's dropdown, where's the state dropdown? State dropdown is right here. The value of it is Alaska, initially it's Alaska, or it could be anything else. It could be California, but it's starting with Alaska. And then we're going to obviously put the argument here, this argument refers to this value. And we're going to say, filter the data frame, the original data frame, um, so only the, um, uh, it only has rows where the state equals Alaska, okay? Because that's where it starts. It starts with Alaska. And then create a copy of the data frame and use this to create the a list of options. Now, this list that we're creating here is actually going to go into the options of the counties dropdown. The counties dropdown is right here, right? It's right under, right here. This is the county dropdown. And it's going to create the options. It's going to fill this list. So it's going to instead of this list, it's going to take this, put this in there, right? So, because um, it's going inside, it's going to decide this options. So, why are we creating this like this? Because this is typically how we create um, the options list, the list of options inside a dropdown. Uh, so, what we're saying is for C in sorted DFF county. So DFF is the new um, data frame we created, the filtered one, and it only has that only has rows from the state that the user chose. So um, it will only have rows for Alaska when at the very beginning, and it's going to take from those rows. It's going to take um, from the county column. It's going to put them inside this dictionary. Every dictionary represents a county. All right. 
So it's, it's just going to say um, put all take the counties column and insert them inside here. And that's why when you run this app with this callback um, on hashtag um, activated, you're going to see that you have all these options. And if the user chooses Arizona or the user chooses, yeah, let's say Arizona, now you only have counties from Arizona that are the options of this um, of this drop down. If the user chooses California, then you only have those options. Almeida, yeah, okay, and that's because how we built this return function and, and this some um, uh, callback function. Okay, so this is the first callback. Now the second callback, I want to make sure that values are chosen. I want the user, the user can choose values, but I want the app to automatically choose values um, for the users at the very beginning. So this is the second callback, okay? This is a callback to init uh, populate initial values of the counties dropdown. So now that I have the options that were populated right here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the, the, the counties drop down options. I'm going to take this as an input. So it's not going to be an output anymore. It's going to be the input. So I'm going to take the options, I'm going to put them inside here, all the options, and then I'm going to return a list um, comprehension. I'm going to return a list of values. This is going to return inside values of counties drop down, the same drop down, and this value is going to go inside um, here. Comma value. All right. So there's going to be a list of values here once this um, once this um, uh, callback is activated, and we can see what we're actually doing here. Let's actually see what x value means. To see that, just print. Go in here, print available options, and let's see what it gives me. Run. Okay. So you can see um, it actually when we're printing the available options from the drop down all the options here it's actually printing a list of all these of 20 or 30 different um, dictionaries every dictionary represents a county from that specific state right so if i'm saying for x in that list so it's going to say for the first dictionary x represents the first dictionary make this bigger for you for the first dictionary take the x um, value so take this um, value of this key right and then for the second dictionary for the second x which is right here take this value out 10 at west and then so on and so on until you finish all the dictionaries or you finish all the counties that's why the first county here is uh i, I don't even say how to say that uh at lieutenant's east west and anchorage Okay, so this is the list comprehension that goes inside, oops, that goes inside the, um, the value of the county's dropdown. Now, what we want to do, we want to populate the graph. In order to populate the graph, we're going to use this last callback, all right? Okay, please, if you have any questions up to here, feel free to use the comments below the video to ask me um, uh, the questions or, um, or just read more about the chain callbacks inside the Dash documentation. Go into here, I'm gonna put it under the video, go into uh, Dash app chain callbacks, and you'll see another piece of code for chain callbacks of radio items. All right, this will help you as well. Okay, so what are we doing with this last callback? In this last callback, we are going to um, pop, uh, display the graph. So we're going to take the two dropdown, the state dropdown and the counties dropdown, and we're going to take the values um, that were chosen or auto populated, and we're going to do something inside the callback function, create the graph, and then spit out the graph um, into the output, into the figure which goes into here, the empty figure. Okay, so what are we taking? We're taking the first value is gonna be the selected counties, and the second value is a selected state. Now, selected counties is actually a list. And why is selected counties a list? Because it comes from the counties dropdown and value, and the counties dropdown value right here value you don't see it is actually an m is actually a list because multi true whenever multi true that means you can choose multiple values then the type of the value is going to be a list 
So if you have a list and select the counties, you can say if the length of the list equals zero, then just don't update the graph. And why is that? Because a user of your app might go and say, just clear everything. Now you don't want the graph to just disappear. If you don't want the graph to disappear, you just have to do this. Say, if there's no, no values, that means that the length of the list is zero. And then just say dash no update. Just don't update. Um, you're returning dash no update into this callback. So this figure is not being updated. Else, if the list is anything but zero, I'm going to filter the data frame. So it only has the selected the rows with the selected state, right? This value, which equals this value, the rows with the selected state, or and the rows with the selected um, with the selected counties, right? This I'm using is in because the selected counties is a list, and I'm using here equal because the selected state is actually a string. All right. You can see here a string of Alaska or Arkansas, and you can see here a list of values. And every time I take a value out, the callback is activated and it changes the graph a little bit. Every time I change the state, also the callback is activated because it filters, um, filters the data frame, it creates a new data frame, and then we're creating a figure. So how are we creating the figure here? This is the Plotly Express scatter plot, a pretty simple figure. You can read more about it right here in Plotly Express. I'm going to put this uh, link under the video. You can see all the different parameters here. I'm specifically using these parameters. Uh, let me show you. I'm mean, specifically using these parameters. So I'm going to say the data frame is a, is a data frame that we made, that we copied um, and filtered. The x-axis is going to be this um, variable. The y-axis is this variable. It's a column within the pandas data frame. The color is this, and that's why you see the color here, the graduation rate. I'm going to use a trend line, OLS, and this is actually uh, why you see this line here. They hover over it. You'll see the R squared and the trend and all that. Um, to show you correlation rates. The, the bigger the R squared, closer to one, the, the more correlated these two axes, axes are. So I'm using the trend line. Um, size is just the bubble size, which is on the pandas data frame. I just created this column, so it's all 30. I just wanted the, um, the bubbles to be a little bit bigger. And then the hover name is county. That's why if you hover over the bubble, you'll see gnome, Bethel, however you say that, north slope and so on and so on and i'm going to say hover data um, dictionary bubble size false i do not want to see the size i don't need to see 30 30 30 in every in every um, bubble so i took the size out and then i just changed the labels so instead of saying um, percentage of adults high school i just said percentage graduated high school right if you hover you'll see the the new the new wording the new text so this is so, a few how you how you can use some of the parameters in the scatter plot. Um, you definitely don't need all this. You can just take this out if you if you don't want and just do it with this and and create a simple scatter plot. And then because I created the figure variable, now I can I can return it, which returns again into the empty figure of the display uh, drop down right here. All right, and that is why as soon as we choose we load the app, a value is chosen here. All the options are chose are populated here, and we because we had um, a callback that takes the options and creates uh, values like auto populated values. Um, that is why these values are being generated like pre chosen for the user, and then with this last callback, we're actually right here. We're actually putting everything onto the Plotly Express. So that's pretty much it. That is how you create a chain callbacks in uh, Dash. Um, again, uh, if you want to see this code um, of how to create a chain callback, but without, I'm doing the same callbacks and the same chain version, but I'm not um, pre-populating the values inside this app. All right. Um, this is going to be the code if you want to learn more about how to do that. Um, look at the code, download it from my GitHub to learn how to do it. And if you have any questions under the YouTube comment, just um, ask me those questions if you want, or just join my Patreon um, Charming Data community. And I'm going to put a video on how to look at this, how to build this, this app that is a bit different. Okay. I hope you enjoyed. Um, never give up. Keep practicing. 
And remember, we're better together, so always, always help each other out. Thank you very much.